Yo, what's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another Tyler Perry's Zatima overview. This is going to be the uh, overview for episodes one and two of season two. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, you already know what it is and what it always will be. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if that's what you choose to do. If not, sit back, relax, and we're going to get right into this thing. Now, the episode opens up with Fatima and Zach getting it in in the shower. And baby, Fatima is over it, okay? Fatima is over this entire sexual situation. Um, and that leads to a conversation with her and Zach concerning his sexual appetite. And she's curious to know if any other woman he's been with has had a problem with his sex drive. And so Zach lets it be known that he doesn't have a problem. And I was like, yeah, buddy, you do. Now, especially when Fatima stated to Angela that he wants it four to six times a day. I said four to six times a day. I knew at that very moment that Zach does not work. He has entirely too much time on his hands. Now, he may go to his office, but there is no work getting done. He had that's, that's too much energy to burn off four to six times a day. My dude, there, there is no way Fatima is not a machine. She's just not a machine. And I think I have a very high sex drive myself, but four to six times a day. Who? Who's trying to do that, baby? We have things to do. We have extracurricular activities. We want to hang out. We want, you know, we have things to do with our families. I don't understand that. I just don't. Now, I've always believed that um that Zach has always put a heavy emphasis on the fact that he's able to provide such a sexual uh pleasurable experience for women like that's his thing that's how he kind of i guess magnifies his self-worth and other than that he just doesn't have much to offer i know people don't want to hear that but let's let's be honest other than that he really don't and so we learned that he also has had a traumatic experience um surrounding sex but we'll get into that a little later now as Zach and, and Fatima leave to start their day they <laughs> Deja is outside sitting on the foot of an ambulance getting her heart rate checked. They now, I love me some Deja. She is annoying as hell, aggravated, but she's funny and I really like her. But Deja doing the absolute most. He she is doing the absolute most. So one thing I can say, whenever Deja is around, Fatima turns into this territorial, uh, protective, borderline insecure woman. Okay. Deja tells Fatima that she knows what she did to her and she brings up the hot tub incident. And so Fatima tells Zach to go back in the house, like go back in the house because she doesn't want Zach talking to Deja. Fatima almost kind of, it almost sounded like she was scolding him, like a mother scolding her child to get back in the house because I don't want you interacting with this person because they're, they're not good for you in your life. That's how it kind of was playing out. And I'm like, it's obvious that Fatima does not trust Zach whatsoever. She, it's the truth. She don't. And so Tasia tells Zach to get his pit bull. Baby, I holler. Because I was like, you know what? She kind of ain't lying. <laughs> she kind of ain't lying. I thought it was funny. That's just me. Um, So Fatima leaves. And then Zach leaves shortly after. Fatima circles back to make sure that Zach is gone. I said, baby, what is this? What is going on? So we get to Zach and Bryce and he apologizes. And I understand Zach being upset because he was violated. Truly, he was violated. And Bryce lied, in my opinion, because he was looking at Zach in a sexual manner. Because he kept stating like, no, that wasn't the case. It wasn't like that. I promise. And I'm like, Zach, um, excuse me, I'm like, Bryce, you lying. Because last season, he showed up to Angela's house with the full heart on after leaving Zach's presence. So you was thinking about this man in the sexual light. And there's no telling how long that had been going on. So I do understand Zach's, I guess, like his feelings about the whole situation. I don't know because I, I just don't blame Zach. Like, I don't blame him for responding the way that he is responding to a certain extent. So, Zach decided that after they complete their two projects, that it's best for them to go their separate ways. And so, Bryce feels that if he would have told Zach his truth, 
that Zach would not have accepted him. And I said, I feel that's a horrible assumption to make because you don't know. And now no one will ever know because you didn't give Zach the opportunity. And then, you know, Zach lets him know that they're grown and he doesn't care who he sleeps with. And I'm just like, I'm just looking at Bryce sideways because, baby, you was in a whole relationship with Angela and you're more concerned about how Zach views your truth than this woman who you've been deceitful to. I'm like, yeah, Bryce, mm mm-mm. You don't get no leeway with me. I just feel like you just real, you real iffy. You know what I'm saying? You, you real iffy. So I don't understand why Fatima is friends with Angela. I, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. She's the type of friend that always comes around and sow seeds of discord and doubt. She's basically detrimental to a relationship. If you got a friend like Angela, Don't tell them nothing about your relationship. They shouldn't even be around you and your man or you and your girl, however, because there's some male Angela's out there too, just, you know what I'm saying, let's be honest. So we get to the barbershop scene. The only thing I'm going to talk about in this particular moment is Jeremiah, which is Zach's brother, pops up, and he lets him know that he needs to go see their mom. And so Zach is a little thrown off because mom ain't cared about me in these past years, and all of a sudden she wants me to see her. Hmm. Jeremiah was real disrespectful. He came into the shop smoking. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tony asked him, like, please don't disrespect his father's shop. Please, you know, put away whatever he was smoking. And he was like, F you and your father. I said, well, damn. Um, Okay, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is so disrespectful. <laughs> whoever, I don't, know the, I don't know his name, but whoever is playing that role, he's doing a good job. Because, bro, we don't like you. We don't like you. We, we just, we don't. So... Moving right along, um, we find out that Fatima has a flat tire. Her and Angela walking out, she has a flat tire. And there's this fine contractor by the name of Paul who offers to help. Angela got on my damn nerves, okay? I don't know no other way around it. Angela got on my nerves. Her damsel in distress act was so phony. (laughs) It was so phony. It was team too much. It team not enough. It was just entirely too much. I said, this why this why you ain't got no man, sis. You're doing too much. You are doing entirely too much. But before we get to find Paul popping up, there is a point where Fatima is trying to change this tire. And Angela tells her, well, you know what? She, she, she told Fatima, you, you know, you're independent. Fatima doesn't say, doesn't have, doesn't seem as if there's anything wrong with that. Like, okay, and? Then Angela says, well, you know what Ian used to say? And Fatima was like, really, you you bringing up Ian now? I have an issue with Angela. First of all, if that was me, do not bring up the name of an ex who you know damaged me emotionally to make a futile point, such as my independence. That's why earlier I said, I don't know why Fatima is friends with Angela. Because Angela, she ain't it. She just, I, I can't see the dynamic. I, I know they're college friends as well, but I'm like, Fatima, you need to drop her. Just, you need to drop her. Now, Fatima tells Paul um, thanks but no thanks after he tells her that he can help her get the tire. And Fatima was like, no, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call my fiance and so on and so forth. However, she does take Paul up on his offer to help her because he has a friend who can order anything that has to do with automobile mechanics and stuff like that. So Fatima gets home. And Zach is trying to have sex almost immediately. The girl has not even taken five breaths before he grabs her hand and try to lead her upstairs. And I'm like, bruh, this is how you know you got a problem. She just got home from work. And he was like, you know how long I've been waiting on you? Zach, get some business. You have a business, but you ain't got no business. Because there's just no way. There's just no way you're on go. This girl just got in the house. So... <laughs> It's clear to me that Zach uses sex as an escape from his issues and his reality because there's just no way in the world. So Fatima sits down and she was like, you know, babe, it's too much. Like, I do. I enjoy having sex with you. It's not the fact that she doesn't enjoy having sex with Zach. It's just the consistency that is just a little too much for her. And even though it was written comical, comically, I think that it was a great conversation to have when it comes to men and women and sex now nine times out of ten you're not matched with someone who has the same sexual drive as you sometimes the women's sex drive may be higher than her man's or vice versa and that's why you have to have communication 
Zach was basically saying he did not understand where Fatima was coming from based on the fact that they used to have sex so much in the, the different places they used to have sex. Now it seems like they're in a committed relationship and they're getting, you know, they're engaged now. She doesn't want it as much. And I'm like, you know, that's why you got to be careful because sometimes the way you start a relationship, if you don't keep up with that same tenacity, you know, people think it's a problem. Now, I do understand where Zach was coming from, but the fact that he told Fatima he didn't understand her perspective. I'm like, now, I probably would have been more understanding to his ignorance of that if Zach was in his 20s. But the fact that, my dude, you're 36 years old and you're telling this woman that you can't fathom or understand the fact that having sex that much is a problem for her. And even, you know, with, with men... You know, sometimes you got to understand, you know, you, the women are the receivers. You know what I'm saying? We are the receivers. So you ain't get, I don't want to use the word pounded because I don't think that's, I don't want, that ain't where I'm trying to go. <laughs> but a woman is the one who's taking what you're giving. And maybe if it was the other way around, you know, you could understand more, you know, how women may feel. You know what I'm saying? I like, sex is great. And I think it's a beautiful thing when it's shared you know, in the right way. But six times a day, no. So Fatima tells Zach that, you know, she wants him to have a side chick. And we find out, you know, of course, we knew the side chick was a sex toy. And Zach was not feeling that whatsoever. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I would respond if my man was like, you know what, Alicia, being with you was too much. I can't keep up, so I got you something that can help you in the times that I'm not readily available to you. And I was, I don't know how I would respond to that. I don't know if I would laugh. I don't know if I would be offended. I just don't know. I, I really don't know. So Fatima, you know, is it, is a little concerned, you know, but the way that Zach takes the news of this little side chick, this little sex toy. And so, you know, he tells Fatima that, you know, he saw his brother and he told his brother that he was going to go see their mom. And, you know, she asked, you know, do you want me to go with you? And he was like, nah, my mom and you like, nah, I ain't ready for that yet. And so I think he asked her when he was going to meet her parents. And we find out that Fatima has not told her parents that Zach even exists in her world, in her life. They don't know that she's engaged. They don't even know she's seeing somebody. I was like, hold up. Hold Hold up, Fatima. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're engaged to this man. And your family, your parents have no idea of his existence. That says a lot, ma'am. That says a whole hell of a lot. So Zach goes to see his mom. And she lives in a rundown area, drug infested. Um, Jeremiah keeps bringing up the fact that he went to jail for Zach. He said it. In the barbershop scene as well. So I'm like, you keep bringing this up to Zach. You went to jail for him. Okay, he just gave you a check for $10,000. Now y'all in his face. Y'all, ma Your mama asking Zach to purchase you a car for business, a truck. And it's like, are you serious? He just gave you a check for $10,000. Where, where is that at? You know what I'm saying? It was, it was sad. You know, it really was. And so the mom asked Zach to take her to the grocery store. She needed some groceries. And he was like, all right, I'll take you. Lord. So, so they get to the grocery store. And at first she was like, you know, you could just give me the money. And Zach was like, no, nah, I'm going in with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going in with you. I get it, whatever. And I think he ended up giving her a hundred dollars in cash. So as they're in the store, Zach, uh, gets a call from Fatima. And in the midst of that, we are introduced to a character by the name of Connie. And Connie is one of Zach's ex girls now I'm not gonna say that Connie was someone that Zach was in love with it really came off like a sexual situation and going back to what I said earlier about it almost seems like Zach has nothing to offer women other than his penis because the way that we were introduced to Connie it just made it seem like yeah, you know how we used to be you know how it was look you the fact that Zach had a hard on talking to this woman I'm like sir you can't control yourself this woman make you want to have sex. Like, like what? It was just, there are certain like tug of wars I have with this whole, you know, Zach situation. He's already not a favorite character of mine, but I hate the fact that he's written in a way that any relationship that he has had 
prior to Fatima, I'm going to include uh, Karen in there. But it's like every other woman that comes across his path, it's only been sex. The only type of accolades they give him is sex. We have yet to meet a woman in Zach's past that has said, you know, I love the way you used to treat me. You know, it just didn't work because we were going apart or we were going in separate directions. None of that exists. Every type of situation with the woman is all about sex. And it's hard. It's really hard for me to believe that, but that can that's, that can really be the reality. So he backs away from Connie. You know what I'm saying? He was like, you know, hey, you know, I'm engaged, you know, so on and so forth. And Connie, just thirsty. Like, please give her a drink of water. So Zach turns around. He tries to go find his mom. And this chick has left. She got the $100 and she got the hell out of Dodge. So Fatima sees Zach sitting in the car. And I want to say DeVal really went there because I, I really felt him in this moment. God knows I did. And so the way that he was able to portray that hurt and that childhood trauma and bring it to the forefront. So Fatima recognizes that Zach is in his car. So she goes out to see about him. And he begins to tell the story about, you know, his mom. I think he said he was six. They went to the store. He couldn't find his mother. So he goes looking for her. And she's giving head to like this trucker and he's calling her, you know, mommy, mommy. And she doesn't stop. So I can't imagine. I walked in on my mama doing something when I was a kid, traumatizing. <laughs> okay. I quickly closed the door and went back in my room. She probably don't even know. If she'll know if she listened to this. She probably don't even know I saw what I saw. But the fact that you're, you're watching your mom do something. And as a kid, it's a, it's a, it's a degrading act. It's something that is extremely traumatizing. And to call your mom and for her not to stop what she was doing. I'm pretty sure that his mom was on drugs at the time too. I'm sure of it. And she just wasn't capable of being the mother that he needed. Because she was putting her own needs and her own desires and self-fulfillment before him and his brother. Which is, is a horrible way to grow up. And, um, you know, he began to break down. And he asked Fatima... You know, like, Fatima, do you love me? And I think he has an issue with really trusting the fact that women love him for him and not for what he can do. And I really want to see Zach, you know, and Fatima brought up uh, therapy. And I really want to see Zach, like, get himself together or whatever the case may be. Because I don't believe he's like, let me not say that because I was going to say I don't believe he's a horrible guy. I couldn't be with Zach, but that's neither here nor there. But that scene was very touching. The only thing I don't want to see happen, and this is not to take away from what we learned of Zach's childhood trauma. I do not want Tyler Perry to write this in a way where because he experienced stuff with his mom, it's a justification that's him being the way that he is now. Because you're 36 years old, you've had ample time to unpack this stuff, to get yourself together, to truly deal with the hurt little boy that's on the inside of you. So I don't give him a pass for that. I just I just don't want there to be a justification. Oh, that's why he did what he did. Or that's why he act the way that he acts. No, I don't want to see that happen. And I thought about this because I had a conversation with my friend who was very sympathetic to the character of Zach. And I understood because I was too when you have that, when you've been damaged as a child. And I told him and I was like, you know, I said, I'm in my 30s. And I have never, ever, other than a character I may have written this for, I have never, ever said in my personal life as Alicia, oh, I got to ask my dad about that, you know, or are you serious? My dad would kill me and you. Oh, you want to send me on a date? You, you got to ask my dad first. I've never had that. You know why? Because my father, I, I know who my dad is. <laughs> my dad was around when I was a kid, but growing up, he was not in my life. And I don't constitute that as a way to say, oh, well, that's why I chose the guys that I chose, or that's why I did this, or that's why I did that. You have to deal with the traumas that we may have picked up along the way from our parents and deal with it effectively so that we can become the people that we want to become and not just be complacent. You know what I'm saying? With, oh, well, my mama did this, so that's... No, like, that doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? That's not a justifiable reason to, you know, be an asshole. And like I, like I said, the end, of, the end of episode two was very touching. 
And then we go along into episode three and four where Zach is a complete and utter asshole. But we're going to get into that in the next video. So I want to thank you guys um, for listening. This is episode one and two. I will not be doing scene by scene. I'm just going to give my overall thoughts about what happened. And you know what I'm saying? We'll go from there. Again, like I said, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, y'all be safe out there. One.